Today I'm going to talk about qualifying parts in the routing electrical package. And it is a very big subject. I could go on for quite some time about this subject. So I'm going to try to keep it short and at least talk about the high end specifics so you have an understanding of it. Now eventually I will be putting together a course for electrical routing and I'll have all sorts of connectors and components and we'll get deep into the qualifying of parts and we'll get deep into how to create your routings and talk about paths and stock and parts and how to replace them etc cetera, etc cetera. but in order to keep this below 20 minutes and I'm not joking I have to be very short with what I explain now as far as the data that I'm using, and this is just data that I pulled in from, I went to molex.com, looked for a connector, downloaded it, brought it into NX. So if you have connectors that you want to qualify, you don't have to have a solid that's fully parametric, right? This is solid, what is it, SolidWorks data that they offered me, I just pulled it in. So you can see this is what happens when I bring in SolidWorks data. I could bring in Parasolid, Step, whatever, and then begin qualifying that part. It's one of the nice things about part qualification is you do not need a parametric model. And in fact, I will say this as somebody that's a big fan of parameters, I would you do not want parameters on your connectors unless you're the one designing the connector. You don't want someone to accidentally change something, which is very easy to do in NX. So build your library of components from wherever you're buying your connectors and then begin qualifying them. Now to do the qualification, we look under part, under more qualify part. Now, before I get into qualified part, if you would do me a favor, I know being irritating, just subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I've been getting a lot of really great comments lately, sparking ideas of things to talk about for the channel. And uh, I, it's always nice to read what people are thinking in their experiences. So please leave me a comment. Also, I know several of you have been asking me questions about the courses that I do have. And yes, I do have payment options, so if you want to spread it across three months, you can do that. If you need additional time or something a little different, go ahead and email me. I have my email in the description, and we can talk about additional options just for you. Again, thank you to everyone, because without you, I wouldn't be here doing this. Anyway, back to qualifying my part. So we're going to be qualifying a fitting. This fitting is a connector. As you can see, you have various types of things that you could set up and do. Now, if I look under connector, you have device, splice, fitting, etc. So you want to try to be as accurate as possible. Now, when we come down to ports, you'll notice there's all sorts of things that you can do. You have cross sections, overstock faces, and fittings, and features, and all sorts of stuff that you can qualify. The purpose of qualifying a part is so that when you bring in the male and female connectors in this case, not only do they align perfectly, but whatever wires are going to hang off of them are also going to have certain, we'll say, qualifications for those wires. Maybe you cannot have a hard bend on a wire and you need to have some relief at the back end of it when it gets installed, that kind of thing. So there's all sorts of things this qualify part does. It is a very, very large part of your electrical as well as mechanical routing. This is a very important thing to understand. And again, I'm just going to do the basics. So fitting, in this case, it's not just the fitting itself, but how does this fit with something else? So when the male end comes into the female end, how do they fit together? What are the faces that touch? What is the orientation of the connectors? that type of thing. So I'm going to right mouse click on that and say new. I want to pick a point that's in the dead middle of this face. There are several ways you can go do that, but I'm going to be very specific about that. I want to make sure I'm getting a consistent point from connector to connector. So the method that I'm going to use is I'm going to specify my point origin. Now I can define this ahead of time, create a point where I want, and then use 
a point, same thing in the mail terminal, doesn't matter, but I don't have a point defined. Again, I'm using data that's been migrated over and it's just fine because we're not going to be making changes to this. So none of these ports will fail. So picking a boundary representation in a case like this does not matter one lick. So the point that I'm gonna create sits between two points. The two points that I'm gonna sit in between are this edge, let me pick the top edge, to this edge. And I wanted to sit 50% right in the middle. This is very easy for me to define in the mail end of the terminal and have everything line up the way it's supposed to line up. So that's why I'm being very specific about this. Once I select my point, I need an alignment vector. Which vector is going to be used for the install? So if this is gonna bring the male and female together, what direction are they coming together in? The male is gonna point this way, the female is gonna point this way, and they're gonna to come together. Okay, so the point defines the point that's going to touch on both connectors, and then the direction that they're going to be brought together in is going to be normal to this face. You could pick a vector as well. If you have a tooling direction, whatever that may be, you can pick it. So now I have, let me select OK, select OK. Now there's a couple things I need to talk about. I'm going to come back into there. So I have this port. This port is what you're going to always select when you define your routes, your paths, and all the other stuff, because these ports have information associated to them. Now, when I double click on this, you'll notice it just takes me to this fitting port properties. Okay, that's just giving it a name, etc. If I need to modify this, which I'm going to do, I need to go back into qualify port. In my window, here's my fitting. All right, I want to take this guy, I'm going to right mouse click, and I am going to say edit. Now, something I should have mentioned earlier, I didn't because I was in a rush, it's my bad, is port name is very important. These are the names that you're going to use to make certain that your schematics have the information that they need in order to make the schematic. I know I'm going to run from this connector over to this connector. I have a wire that's going to sit in this connector, one of the terminals, to this connector in one of the terminals. The schematic defines all that. When I define my schematic in another system and import that information into NX, it's going to look for these names. Okay, it doesn't have to be 100% defined because you can manually do things afterwards, but the more of this you do up front, the more of the I call it auto magic. It automatically populates things. It runs the wire. It'll give you a cut length, a strip length for the terminal, the works. Okay, so the more of that stuff that you do up front, again, once you qualify your, your connector, once it's done, you don't have to do it again. Okay, because a connector is a connector. You have no control over that connector. Molex, in this case, has control of that connector. And they're not going to change it. So they'll just make a new connector if need be. So a part with no parameters being qualified is perfectly acceptable. Picking edges and faces and stuff like that is perfectly acceptable because nothing is going to change the part, okay? This is my vector for engagement. And then I also have what's called a rotation vector. When the male end and the female end come together, are they going to come together like this? Are they going to come together like this? You know what? There's different orientations. So I have to lock the orientation down. This is not simply round. If it were just truly round, it wouldn't matter. But it's not. So I have, or maybe truly rectangular. It still matters because you have to make sure that, you know, things. But anyway, philosophy. I want to pick a rotation vector. And I'm going to pick this vector pointing up. So that way, the male end will have the point, will have the vector, and it will have this vector as well. So when the two are brought together and placed into the assembly, they automatically engage correctly 100% of the time. Some of the other things that are in here, you know, there's clocking angles. We don't have to worry about clocking angles. You know, some things come together and then twist, that type of thing. Not going to worry about that. We don't have to worry about engagement. This is like if there's a gap that I want to have in between parts, not going to worry about that. Flow direction, again, is it 
is a fluid going through this? Is this an in port, out port, that type of thing? Okay, so qualifying, that's why they call it a port, not just electrical or mechanical, because they're all ports. And I have an extension. This extension is basically how much flat or straight I need for a wire. Now, in this case, it's not going to matter because I just have a terminal that's coming, or I'm sorry, a, another connector that's coming in. Not worried about that. So you can put this at zero, leave it at 10. It's not going to matter. I'm going to select OK. And there is now my fitting. And this is how it clocked. So, and I place my male terminal or connector, it goes into this correctly. I am now going to come over to this end and I'm going to right mouse click over multi. Multi is the side that has multiple connections coming into it. This has six wires, potentially up to six wires that are going to come out. So I need to use a multi. The fitting end is just the, how the two parts fit together. Multi is where the wires come in. So I'm going to right mouse click on this and say new. Same basic premise for qualifying this side. All right, so we're going to qualify it. Point dialog. Points between. This guy and this guy. Select OK. Vector. Pick this face. Now, as far as orientation, I don't need it because nothing else is coming in on the back side, just a bunch of wires. So you do not need to have an orientation on this end. Now, you may have some sort of back cover that's coming in. Some connectors have that, waterproof ones, that type of thing. So if you have that back cover or shielding, then you would have to put in a rotation vector because that cover needs to come in and snap into place automatically. Now with this, down here, you'll notice I have additional length, I have cutback length, I have an extension. So these are various options that are controlling because we know it's a multi-port. It's going to be a bunch of wires. So I have additional length. Maybe I want a little bit of give on this connector. So I can put that in there. I have an extension, basically. How much flat is going to come out that back end before it's allowed to bend as well as cutback length, okay? So again, I don't want to get into all these little nuances. I'm just going to select OK and create my multi. Now I have to define the multiple ports that are going to engage with this multi port. So for this, I'm going to click it, right mouse click, and assign terminals. Start down here. I have one through six. So I have six terminals and I'm going to generate a sequence. Right now they're currently virtual ports. It knows it has six, but it doesn't know where they go. So port number one, the terminal goes down here. Now I get this line that magically appears. And what I'm going to do is I want this to go in the opposite direction. So I am going to reverse that direction. Imagine I'm doing a bridge curve. The curve is going to come in and it's going to bridge to this. Okay. Now, if I were to leave it in this direction, I'll show you. All right. These come in the other direction. You zoom in, pick that face. Again, this is where the terminal is going up to. This is port number four, port number five, port number six. Okay. They all go line up except for that first one. I'm going to select OK. There are my ports. Okay. So these are for when the wire comes in, it knows where it needs to go. And just like that, I have my extension.
I should say, well, the port that the wire needs to go through. This is the direction the terminal is going to come in. It's going to install in that direction, right? So the terminal comes in. This is why it's important. The terminal goes in this direction. The wire comes out this direction. That wire starts out at that point. Because we're talking about we have a strip length. The tip of that is going to go basically roughly to that, right to that point. Okay? So, like in this case, I do not have to have a clocking for this. This case, I did. This face is going to engage with something else. This is just to tell it, well, I have all these wires that are going to come out in this direction. So that's why, you know, here you look at the tree, you can look at the different ports. Qualifying is very important. And again, it does not matter that I have part with history. It doesn't matter that I'm picking edges. None of that matters because I'm never going to make modifications to this connector. You're not going to do it. So for those of you that are like, well, I got to have parameters and I got to do this and I got to do that. Ease up, slow your roll, bro. Take it easy, take a breath. It's okay to pick edges. It's okay to do the things that, you know, for years we've been told not to do or whatever that may be. Because again, you, you have no control over this connector other than are you going to buy it and install it? That's it. So that's what qualifying your part is all about. Now, if I have to make a change for some reason, I have to go into the qualify, qualify part menu. And, you know, if I came in here, right mouse click and said edit, it takes me right back to that menu. Again, give it a port name. This is what's recognized at the schematic level. And then because I have, you know, here's port number one, it knows port number one, or this is terminal number one, quite literally terminal of this port so when i run my schematics it knows it's going from terminal number four over here to terminal number one over here it knows how things go it knows how to stack things and it gives you proper cut lengths okay so qualifying a port very important again this is for electrical this is for mechanical anything that is going to be a consistent thing that you're going to use in one of those routing applications and again, once you do it once, you never have to do it again. It may be tedious up front. You, you may, you know, I got 200 of these things we got to use. Not a big deal. Just go through, muscle through it, define how you want things oriented. Do you want a horizontal? Do you want a vertical? Have all those definitions in place and then begin applying. It's easy to make a modification. Maybe something's changed midway. You got to go back and modify it. You can do that modification. Now, if you are going to do modifications to your qualified ports, that type of thing, you may want to think about revving the part. So that way, you know, you have your original ports, original connectors set up a certain way, and then you can rev it and supersede and do things that need to be done in order to manage things correctly. Now, there are a lot of other things that you can do with these. So if, you know, if I, if I came in here, let me go back into qualify my port. Pick my port, let me right mouse click over multi. You know, I've assigned my terminals. I have object characteristics. So I have length addition, a unique ID. I can give it additional attributes as needed. Maybe something specific about the type of insulation for the wire, whatever that may be. I can be very specific. I can generate my own. I can inherit something from somewhere else, etc., etc. So it allows you to do quite a bit. And understanding this will make everything a lot easier for anything routing or mechanical. And that's what it is. Sorry for the really long video. I know I needed to do it. It could be much longer, to tell you the truth. Um, anyway, I hope you learned something. And if you did, again, please subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. It's always nice to hear from people. And of course, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.